mama told me when I was young. Come sit beside me, yeah, my only son. Well, listen closely. Welcome back. This is episode five of the Southern Tales podcast special season called Leonard Skinner Shorts, where we're attempting to, I don't know, just share some information that maybe y'all haven't seen or some bootlegs or some magazines or if just, just information and then start a discussion because we're certainly not the experts about everything. We've kind of lived the same life everybody has with the same rumors and the same, you know, suspicions. Um... Anyway, first of all, I'm special, right? Should I tell them? I'm, most of y'all know that on this uh, YouTube channel is Ronnie Van, or not Ronnie Van Zandt, Gary Rosling's first wedding video, right? It's kind of rough, but again, it's the summer of 77, and it's just kind of cool to see all the guys in the band dressed up in tuxedos, and the sound is pretty terrible, and there's somebody talking. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Is still cool. Well, for everyone who subscribes to this um, channel, Broadneck Music, you're going to have special access to a video we've unearthed of Leon Wilkinson's uh, birthday party with Rosin Collins Band in 1981. It, I'm not sure if it's backstage or in a studio, but it's some funny stuff because these guys are kind of ridiculous, and you'll see uh, Leon cutting a cake with Samurai Sword and Barry Harwood dancing. He should not be dancing. Um, kind of cool stuff. So subscribe, and later this summer we'll be sending out that link to everybody. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, tonight, what do you want to talk about? It's, we have to talk about the plane crash. The plane crash, and there are a lot of rumors about that. It's inevitable to have stories built on this crash. I mean, there's the Artemis Pyle movie, which kind of showed something. There was somebody else who said... Artemis was a reason for the crash. That the plane idled so long in Greenville, Artemis' hometown, waiting for him. Possibly. And they burned a lot of gas waiting. I don't know. Um, Artemis Pyle has been kind of outspoken about it. I can tell you this. Um, if you've ever seen this, I got this from Lacey Van Zandt in 2000, February of 2000. He autographed it, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool with me, right? Um, Lacey Van Zandt says they just ran out of gas. And you would think he would know. And with no explosion at the crash site, it seems pretty pretty typical to be no fuel in the tanks. Yeah. Um, this book, if you don't have it, is just full of family pictures of kids, aunts, uncles, Lacey and Marion, just a ton of stuff about Ronnie Van Zandt growing up. And if y'all want me to, and y'all can tell me in the chat, uh, maybe we'll do more about this book later. It's one of my prouder items. Uh, talking about the plane crash, we've unearthed this Rolling Stone magazine. I hope you can see it. Not really sure. This magazine is from December the 1st, 1977. You know, they always run about two or three weeks behind their information. Steve Martin's on the cover. As you can see in the bottom here, it says, Leonard Skinner, Victims and Survivors. Um, we open it up, and we see um, several interesting things. One of the things I, I caught my eye was uh, Bing Crosby's obituary. So the same Rolling Stone magazine that had Ronnie Van Zant's had Bing Crosby, 1903 to 1977 in it. So that's kind of that's kind of classy, I guess. Um, also has an article called Ronnie Van Zant, Requiem for a Simple Man. Uh, maybe we can post that or even read it sometime. But today we're just going to kind of talk about this article. Um... The Last Flight of Leonard Skinner. Very heart-wrenching story. Um, the article starts off with a pretty long quote from Billy Powell. Um, I'm going to read that now. 
The Last Flight of Leonard Skinner. This is Billy Powell verbatim. We had decided the night before that we would definitely get rid of the plane in Baton Rouge. So we started partying to celebrate the last flight on it. The right engine started sputtering and I went up to the cockpit. The pilot said they were just transferring oil from one wing to another. Everything's okay. Later, the engine went dead. Artemis and I ran to the cockpit. The pilot was in shock. He said, oh my God, strap in. Ronnie had been asleep on the floor and Artemis got him up and he was really pissed. We strapped in and a minute later we crashed. The pilot said he was trying for a field, but I didn't see one. The trees kept getting closer. They kept getting bigger. Then there was a sound like someone hitting the outside of the plane with hundreds of baseball bats. I crashed into a table. People were hit by flying objects all over the plane. Ronnie was killed with a single head injury. The top of the plane was ripped open. Artemis crawled out the top and said there was a swamp, maybe alligators. I kicked my way out and felt for my hands. They were still there. I felt for my nose, and it wasn't. It was on the side of my face. There was just silence. Artemis and Ken Pedden and I ran to get help. Artemis with his ribs sticking out. And remember, this was uh, in the December 1st, 1977 issue of Rolling Stone. So it was only a, a week or so after the crash. As many movies as you want to create, this story from a survivor is, is the most touching. It's the realist. Yeah, and what's cool about that is that it's firsthand. It's immediately after the crash, so it's not tainted by years of, you know, your mind gets clouded. And a lot of things from my past get more glorious the longer <laughs> it's been. But this is right after the crash. Um, pretty, it's pretty clear neither engine was working, according to Billy Powell. And... The running out of gas thing that Lacey Van Zandt talks about is probably exactly what happened. Now there's some question about why they ran out of gas or whatever, but it really doesn't matter. You know, our heroes uh, went down in Macomb, just outside of Macomb, Mississippi. Um, we'll talk about Billy Powell later. I, I just have to throw this in. Um, I've met Billy Powell several times over the years. The first time I met him was in the mid '80s, like '80. 84, 85, he was in a Christian band. Did you know that? I remember that. And they came to Memphis and they played at the movie house which had been converted. The movie house was a porn theater on Highland Avenue that had been converted into a performing venue. And um, I forget the band, but he played keyboards with that Christian band. Um, they did, they did, it was kind of like a revival almost. And then later you and I saw him at Horseshoe Casino. Yeah. <laughs> He was pulling slots, pulling that big, big arm. <laughs> it was before they were playing, and um, it was before the show or after? After, I think. Yeah, and it was a quarter slot. And he, had, he was uh, asking for more drinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the waitress bought him a drink, and she kind of stood there and looked at him after he took the drink, and he said, oh, I'll tip you when I win. Classy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that was my other encounter with, with Billy Powell, which is kind of cool. And, and talking his story is cool, too. We'll talk about that later, how he got in the band and whatnot. Um, anyway, that's all we have for tonight. And I hope that you guys all jump in and subscribe to the channel and talk about, um, you know, the, some of the stuff we did. Answer some questions for us. Shed some light on it. And also give us some suggestions. There are several of you that were interested in being on the show. We'd love to come visit you and, and film the episodes and get more and more stories and just kind of centralize everything Leonard Skinner. So anything else, John? I think we're getting it started, started up. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun because it's something we have a lot of passion about um, and some cool things upcoming, including Leon Wilkinson's birthday party. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's ridiculous. So up until then... Uh, Y'all be cool and wait for the next episode, hopefully within a week or so. We'll see you then.